I remember like it was yesterday. I had just gotten home and I received a call that I never thought that I would get. In all the years that I've been doing rescue, I've never dealt with a case like this before. So this was a first for me. Jill's the first person who I called and I couldn't do it by myself. We were just told by the sheriffs that this was likely dog fighting. When we arrived at the scene in Franklin, I don't think that any of us were prepared for what we were walking into. The sheriffs were faced with 20 dogs being housed in a barn. The dogs were stacked four high in single kennels. They had been neglected for quite some time. They were covered in feces and blood and vomit. When I walked down the row of crates that it got, Worse and worse. Every dog I looked at seemed to be worse than the previous one. It was the most disturbing and horrific thing that I've ever seen. And our mission was to get them out of there as soon as possible. We slowly moved all of the crates onto the vehicles and we got to the very end. We had one dog left to move and that was Remo. He was completely emaciated. His nails were also severely infected from living in his own waste. He was covered in scars that was obvious from dog fighting. His scars really told his story of a life of barbaric torture. Just looking at his face, I just knew this dog has been through something I've never seen before. It was devastating. and he came out and he immediately licked my hand. And you could almost see the relief just come pouring out of him. He trusted her and it was probably the first human that he ever trusted. I picked him up and put him in the van with me. For a few minutes he sat at my feet, but then he slowly just started to inch his way up. He put his paws on my legs, and then next thing I knew, he was a little bit up, a little further, and then the next thing I knew, his head was right on my chest. She looked at me and she said, you know I'm gonna adopt him, right? And I said, yeah, I know. When Remo first came to my home, he didn't know what affection was. He had to learn what it meant to be loved. With time, he was cuddling next to me and super affectionate. He acts like a puppy sometimes because I think that he's never had the opportunity to just be a dog. Oh, crash. There's this whole amazing side of him that has emerged. It's amazing to watch an animal go from this shut down dog who doesn't trust people, is scared, and they blossom in your care. And to know what the dog came from and what you helped the dog get to, it's amazing. This is why we do this. The fact that Jill adopted Remo made perfect sense for me. I don't think that there was a better dog for her. And there's definitely not a better human for Remo.